Hey, how you doing? Today is going to be a video on installing the Diamondback HD tonneau cover. Woo! I am excited about this because I have been waiting a long time and it's finally here. The truck's outside, so let's go head out there now. Man, just looking at this, it is a thing of beauty. I cannot wait to get started on this. So let's go ahead and move this big boy inside the garage. That's heavy. Now that the cover is inside the garage right now, right there, I need to make some room to fit my truck in here because first things first, I need to get rid of this guy right here. This is my old tonneau cover and it's a soft cover. I actually purchased this soft tonneau cover a while back because I wanted to see if I was even gonna like it, if they're practical. I never was a fan just looking at them, but now someone who's used them for such a long time, I finally realized I like it and I wanna get the better one. And by better, I mean the Diamondback HD. This thing is mean. Why don't I just stick with this? Well, here's the biggest reason. I don't like the fact how easily breachable it is. I mean, honestly, if I really wanted to, I could just, you know what I'm saying? Okay, now let's get this cover off. All right, this cover is gonna be really simple to take off. Once I remove those six clamps, this tunnel cover comes right off. Now, of course, before any project, safety is our number one priority. Don't get me wrong, I'm not making fun of the Russian hacker. I just love his catchphrase. Let's go ahead and remove these clamps. I apologize for any of the background noise. I have no control over it, but here we go. All right, now because I plan on selling this, I'm gonna go ahead and throw it in a plastic bag and make sure none of this gets lost. Next step, I just need to remove four little screws this one and this one, as well as on the other side. So I can take apart the two railings and fold this up. Now I should just be able to pull these apart. Last piece. Let's get to the good part, the unboxing. Drum roll, please. Look at it. Just, would you just look at it? Just, just look at it. Oh, mama, look at this. Are you kidding me? Oh, this. Diamondback, you're gonna make a great addition to my truck. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> so as per Diamondback's Instructions. Sorry for the shakiness. I am trying to balance a tripod on the back of my truck. Diamondback does recommend that we install the middle piece first, but there's three things you gotta do. Make sure it's in the center, cheat it a little bit towards the tailgate, but also there's some arrows on the bottom. Right there. The arrow should be pointing towards your tailgate. We need to grab four clamps. These four clamps are what hold the very center of the tonneau cover. Now that we have the center panel in the middle of the truck bed, slightly cheated towards the tailgate and the arrows are pointing towards the tailgate, which is important. We need to loosely affix the center panel with these cap clamps. So we're gonna affix these cap clamps to the four interior corners of the underside center panel and we'll move on to the next step. And as you can see here, these are the interior corners of this center panel. And we're gonna go ahead and place these clamps just like this. So you want the bolt 
on the bottom end and the larger surface area of the clamp because you can see there's a smaller one and there's the big one. You want the big one on top to crunch down on the center panel and this bottom piece is gonna go underneath your bed rail just like this. Now, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to move some of my lights around because as you can see, it's not gonna fit because I have custom lights underneath my bed rails to give me light during the nighttime. So I need to move those first. And here's what it should look like when it's installed correctly. You see the bottom piece is clamped underneath the bed rail and the top piece has more surface area to clamp down on the center panel. And you just wanna finger tight this. Don't bolt this down just yet because we still need time to move the center panel back and forth until we find the sweet spot. And just repeat this step three more times. So what I've been doing is loosening them up almost all the way. Once I feel that it's all the way, I give them a twist and I will kind of shimmy them up there. And then I will finger tighten it. Now with my truck, I have these uh, little dimples underneath the bed rail every so often. They're kind of in the way. So I'm hoping that once I adjust this, to the proper position. They won't get in the way of these clamps and I can reinstall these lights underneath. Let's head to step three. Okay, so on step three, this is where you gotta pay attention when you're installing it yourself because you could damage the hinges. So what we're doing now is attaching the tail panel and angling it 90 degrees. Now that tail panel is the one next to the tailgate and we're gonna slide it into the driver's side loop shaped hinge knuckle fully onto the corresponding center panel hinge pin then dropping into the passenger side C-shaped hinge knuckle fully onto its corresponding pin. That is a mouthful, I know. So let's take it step by step. So this is our loop shaped hinge and then we have our C-shaped knuckle over here. And what you wanna do is angle the tailgate 90 degrees, slide it in first, then place it securely here and there's some instructions when you get your own, you'll see it. They really don't want you to mess this step up. Place it onto there and then you can close it. So let's go ahead and walk through that now. And if you're not sure which side is the tailgate side, it's this one right here. The locking mechanism is actually in the center. The other panel has the locking mechanism on the far left driver side so you can reach it. So this is the one that we're gonna take next. This should weigh no more than around 54 pounds. So let's find out. First time lifting it up, actually not that bad. Okay, so here we go. Step one is slide this guy in all the way, then place this one on top of the second hinge. Don't forget, we're doing all of this at a 90 degree angle. Once it's engaged fully, you should just be able to lay it flat. Oh yeah, I need to move that way, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see. I've got a long way to go that way. So hopefully those little bumps on my bed rails aren't gonna get in the way. Now that we have this side on, we're gonna repeat the process again for step four on the other side. Just make sure you take this slowly because you don't want to mess up these hinges. That goes for any time you take this apart or you're just assembling it for the first time, take your time so you don't mess it up. Because I have the HD, this can hold 1600 pounds. I don't weigh 1600 pounds. I'm gonna walk on this while I install the other side because I just feel that's gonna be easier for me. you. <clears throat> again slide it in at a 90 degree angle first once it's fully seated make sure the other side goes into place and slowly close your cover I'm still too close to the cab here so what I'm gonna do is flip this open which you can flip it open in theory all the way from what I've seen in videos yep and then I'm gonna go ahead and move everything just a hair backwards so we can get all this fitting correctly. So for step six and seven, it was installing the cab panel, then shimming both sides, the front and the back, the tailgate and the cab, so that it is aligned perfectly with your bed rails. 
as well as aligned with the tailgate and the cab so it's not hitting. As you saw earlier, in my case, I did have to adjust. No big deal. Once you finish with step six and seven, step eight is, well, tightening down those clamps. If you're curious, you can use a 916 socket or 14 millimeter socket to tighten these down. That's what we're gonna do next. Now you wanna make sure when you're tightening these clamps that they do stay in place, as well as aligned here and here to the best of your ability. They will move a little bit during the process of tightening them down. So once you have them nice and snug, they're not gonna move. It's important to note that Diamondback states that these may, I'm sorry for the shaky camera, these may loosen on the first 100 miles of commute. So you're gonna have to come back here and tighten these up, even though they have locking washers on them. A little trick that you could do is take yourself a Sharpie and mark on the bolt, the washer, and continue it onto the bracket, the mountain bracket, to see if they did move. Now, of course, you may want to go back there and just make sure they're tightened and not loosen. But for my case, I'm going to mark these and check back with them in a little bit to make sure they did not move from their place. Now I'll go ahead and install the other three. So we're on step nine and this only applies to the Diamond HD as per Diamondback's instructions. We're going to go ahead and unpin the four locking rod brackets that slide the plate using a 7 16 socket and we're going to move it to one of the second unoccupied slots and I'm gonna show you what that means right now. So here is our locking rod, and you follow it all the way down to the end, and you have your two bolts here. This is what they're referring to. So what we're gonna do is unbolt completely one of these, and then move it to the second unoccupied slot with a 7 16 socket. And for those of you who are curious, you can use an 11 millimeter socket as well to remove these. And just like the instructions state, we're gonna move that bolt over to the second unoccupied slot, which was here on the left. And put it all back together. But don't tighten it yet. And once you've repeated this step on the other side, we're gonna go ahead and adjust where this locking rod sits. With the Nissan Frontier, I'm gonna move my bracket all the way to the far right. Then we're gonna loosen this locking rod. After you've adjusted the rods to where they can slide underneath the tailgate and they won't hit the side of your truck bed, then you can go ahead and tighten these down. After you've tightened both sides down, you wanna go ahead and adjust your locking rods. So I have the example set here. The rod is at the ceiling of the tonneau cover, then it slopes down, then it goes straight again. When it comes shipped, at least with mine, it came sideways. How do we do this? Simple. You're gonna take the 1 8 hex key that's provided in your shipment and you're gonna find the locking mechanism. Here's the locking mechanism and here are where you place your hex key. This is where you'll make the adjustments. So it's just as simple as righty tighty lefty loosey. You go ahead and loosen it up just a little bit. Then adjust your locking rod so that it's at the ceiling of the tunnel cover, slopes down, and then go straight again and tighten it right back up. It's that simple. Now let's go ahead and fasten down all four bolts at the front. Now, if there's one thing I've noticed about the instructions sent by Diamondback, they can't stress this step enough. This is the correct way to do it, where the lip of your bed rail and the locking rod are center of each other, not too far to the back and not banging the side of your truck bed. Yes, no, good, bad. And here is what it should look like for you visual learners. One thing I've noticed is it's really difficult to lock this unless I'm actually sitting on the cover. That could be just due to the neoprene seals on the edges of the tonneau cover. Since they're brand new, they're gonna take some time to wear in. So for the most part, that's not the biggest deal in the world if I have to sit on this just to lock it. So I don't bore you with the next step. We're gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. We're going to remove one of the bolts to the unoccupied slot and adjust the locking rods so they face the ceiling, they slope down, and then they go straight. After you've made all of your adjustments and you have the locking rods where you want them, everything is smooth, uh, besides having to press down or sit on the cover to lock it, 
The next thing you're gonna do is install one of these. They're little adhesive plastic pieces that are going to go on the lip of your tailgate cover facing backwards. And I believe the reason why Diamondback is doing this is so that it's plastic friction against plastic and not plastic against your metal bed cover, which will wear down those plastic rods to the point where they might start catching. So these are probably important and I'm gonna show you how it's done. So here's a representation of what we're talking about. And I, I went ahead and I notched it even though it wasn't necessary for me to do so. But for the video's sake, I went ahead and took one for the team of my truck. Not a big deal. What you're gonna do is, if I can focus this, is you're gonna take this piece and it's gonna go like this. The adhesive is going to be facing the back of the bed liner. And this part, you're going to bend this back, push this plastic piece into the metal portion of your bed rail. And as you can see here, there is a channel for it to lock into place. So we'll do that now. So here I have the red tape removed with the adhesive. I think it's a little difficult to see on camera, but this is the adhesive side. I'm going to bend this backwards. I'm going to bring it as close as possible to where I need it. And then I'm going to shove it in there, firmly press and voila. It's that simple. And like I mentioned before, I believe Diamondback does this so that you're not causing friction with rubber and metal because clearly metal will win, but friction with plastic against plastic, it's going to last a lot longer and it's gonna be a lot easier to unlock and lock your bed cover. We're almost done. Once you've set up the locking rods on both ends, seated them, all tightened down, buttoned down, the next second to last step are the gas struts. We're almost there. So these are called quick release gas struts, and they are Diamondback branded. These are pretty neat, they're simple. You're just gonna push them on. You want the gas strut facing up and the rod facing down, okay, that's important. You're gonna take your gas strut facing up and where the ball joint is, you're just gonna push it in. It's really that simple and repeat the step down here. Again, you want the rod facing down and take that joint, align them together and push in. Boom. And we are done with the tailgate side. So for the cap side, we're gonna do the exact same thing. But before you do, you wanna make sure you install these tether rods and you're simply moving the loop past this ball joint and behind it. That's all you have to do. You're gonna repeat this on both sides. This is a secondary safety measure. The first one we'll get to in just a second, which is technically the last step to finish the project. I just happened to skip uh, the step by just installing these quickly because they're quick release. But the reason why you want to have these tether lines on is because in the event you're driving down the highway and this decides to pop open and that fails, this is going to catch your tonneau cover flying off the highway. The final step is just installing the safety catch here. This is like the same thing as you would find on the front of your hood so that in the event that it's open, even though it's unlocked and open, this is gonna catch it as with the hood of your car. So we're gonna remove this bolt here, install the safety catch, replace it with the nut, and using a 13 millimeter socket, we're just gonna tighten it down, and we're all done. And that's really it. Once it's on, as you can see, I can close it halfway, and it's not gonna open if it was unlocked. And in order to disengage, you're going to push down on your tonneau cover, you're gonna hold this up, and it'll release it all the way. All in all, the installation was simple. At first glance, the quality and craftsmanship is incredible and I'm so pleased with the Diamondback cover thus far. I'm confident I could have had this installed in a matter of 30 minutes had I not been recording. Last thing I'd like to mention about the installation, you'll want to keep your Diamondback cover closed for the next 24 hours to allow the pressure sensitive adhesive to set. And if you stayed until the end of the video, I appreciate you. Make sure to show your support and leave a like down below, especially if you found this video helpful. If you're new around here, don't forget to subscribe. Let's grow this channel together. I'm excited to put this diamond back to the test with an overnight camping trip I have planned. I may release a video on that. I may not, not too sure at the moment. And just so you know, I am not sponsored by Diamondback, but hey, Diamondback, hit me up. Be sure to check out my other videos. I'll catch you over there. Today is gonna to be a video on how to install. <gasps> it's beautiful. <laughs> oh yeah. Ooh, look at that. Like butter. <laughs>